Hello and welcome to this special edition of the Israel Homeland Security Report. I'm David Jones and today I'm talking to Dr. Noam Brug from Raphael Defense Systems. Dr. Brug, what is the operational status of Protector, Raphael's unmanned marine platform? Okay, well, the Protector is an, uh, it's an unmanned uh, surface vehicle. We like to call it an unmanned integrated uh, combat system because it's more than just a boat that's remotely controlled. Uh, the operational status is that Protector has been operational since more or less 10, 11 years ago. We had the first operational systems uh, with one of our customers. Uh, since then, uh, we have learned a lot of lessons uh, from those operations with, and others with other customers. We are ready today in what, what we call the fourth generation of the Protector system. Uh, and all these generations have been uh, in use with various customers, uh, both for naval use and for uh, homeland security uses. What are some of the advantages of using unmanned platforms for offshore defense? There are operational advantages and there are other uh, advantages, I'd say, type of uh, logistic or non-operational advantages that uh, we can discuss. Uh, the operational advantages, first of all, is that you eliminate the risk uh, to, to your sailors. Uh, the unmanned surface vehicle is operated from a safe distance away, either from shore or from an offshore platform or from a mothership. And, uh, it has all the systems and all the capabilities on it to provide the operators that are far away the situational awareness that they need to know what is happening around them. And it also has all the end effectors, uh, non-lethal weapons and if necessary also lethal weapons to engage any threat uh, if it may come. So the main first advantage of course is to keep your people uh, out of uh, harm's, harm's way. You've spoken about the operational advantages. Now, what are the logistical advantages of unmanned marine platforms? Uh, logistical advantages, there are a few. Uh, one is, first of all, the, the, type, the amount of crew and the type of crew that you need to operate the system. And this leads to high uh, reduction in costs because you can use a smaller crew. Uh, one crew can operate several systems. Uh, you can, uh, this crew does not have to go through a complete uh, combat training. Uh, it can have a much shorter training uh, uh, syllabus and uh, time required to train these people. Uh, you can use, uh, you have a larger pool of available uh, people that can be, can you do this job? They don't have to have a combat profile, so because they're sitting out of the danger. So they can, uh, so you have a larger pool to choose from in operating these systems. In addition, you're using, a, in general, you're using a smaller craft than, a, than you would if you had a manned platform. Because you don't need all the space for the, uh, for the people, all the, the, the mess, the, the places to sleep, etc. And therefore you have a smaller craft, you have a, which is cheaper, low cost, lower cost, life cycle cost to maintain. So all in all, you get a lot of logistical advantages, both on the human training side and operation side, and on the uh, cost of running the platform itself. Thank you very much, Dr. Brewer.